please leave the main floor of the chambers. We have additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 12th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Aquí. Drum. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Lander, here. Levin, here. Levine, here, Lewis, here, Mizell, here. Menchaca, Miller, Present. Moya, Present, Perkins, Present, Powers, here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Balone. Here. Van Bramer. Jaeger. Here. Gibson. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Sean T. Atkins, pastor of Antioch Baptist Church, located at 515 West 125th Street in Harlem, New York. Gracious and loving God, we give you praise for this day. We thank you for these, your precious people, for these local officials, city council, as well as the speaker. Lord, your word says, what does God require of us? To do justice and love mercy and walk humbly before our God. I pray that your hand be upon your people today. Thank you, God, that you're giving them wisdom, insight, and foresight to do the job that you've called them to do. We pray, oh God, that you continue to bless them, that you would enlarge their territory and expand their borders, 
that your hand would be upon them and that you would keep us from any harm or danger. We dispatch angels around this city today, that your hand of mercy will protect us, that no weapon formed against this city shall prosper. We ask right now that your favor be upon your people today. And God, as they serve this city, I pray that the first thing people will come in contact with is your favorite shield. I pray right now that you will orchestrate their footsteps and continue to give them wisdom to do the job that you've called them to do. Lead, guide, and direct them. In your name, amen. Thank you, Reverend Atkins, for your very powerful words. I'd now like to ask Council Member Levine to spread the invocation on record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and I would indeed like to make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record and to tell you how honored I am that, uh, as we affectionately know her, Pastor Sean has been uh, a pillar in the West Harlem community now uh, for decades, part of a, of a dynasty in the neighborhood. Uh, her father in 1977 walked into an abandoned supermarket on 125th Street and brought it back to life as the Antioch Baptist Church. It's been thriving now for four decades. Um, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Pastor Sean entered the ministry in 1996 and along the way has picked up uh, an astounding number of uh, advanced degrees, including uh, from North Carolina AT and T State University, a Bachelor in Science and Management, a Master in Social Work from Fordham University, a Master's of Divinity and Theology from Drew University, and uh, most recently uh, a doctorate from Drew, uh, also in Divinity. She is known by many as a pastor's pastor because of her commitment to supporting the health and well-being of her fellow clergy. And uh, she's often lovingly referred as the pastor with a big heart and simply, as I mentioned, Pastor Sean. She envisions her ministry as one of effectively and efficiently making an impact wherever she is called in the lives of whoever she meets. And she certainly demonstrated that touch today. And I'm really honored that she was able to offer the invocation today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much. We will now have uh, the adoption of minutes and I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meetings of June 26, 2019, as well as July 23rd, 2019, be adopted as printed. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? Um, excuse me, M181 through M185, various applications on page two of the agenda. Give me one moment. A couple done a call-up vote, and at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use uh, call-ups. This is just land use call-ups. Lewis. I don't know. Constantinidis. I know. Adams. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all, and all resolutions. I vote aye. Permission granted. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Cornegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye and all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye and all. Kalos. 
King. I don't know. Ku. I don't know. Kozlowitz. Lewis. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions I vote aye on all. Permission granted. Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Perkins. Aye or no? Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye or no? Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Rosenthal. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions, and I vote aye. Permission granted. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Uh, with permission on today's vote, if you have enough for the majority, I'd like to vote aye on all matters on today's calendar and call-ups, based on my one-arm status. <laughs> permission granted and <laughs> Thank you, my dear. heal and feel better. Like Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. Aye. Rose. Yes. Thank you. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon, thank you all for being with us today. Nice to see you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank Before you. we jump into our legislative agenda, I'd like to take a few minutes to address some of the news and events that have taken place over the last few weeks. Yesterday, of course, was the 18th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. September 11th is always a difficult day for New Yorkers and for our great city. It was 18 years ago, but that pain is still so fresh for so many people who were affected, who survived, or who tragically lost a loved one or a friend. I had the honor of attending the ceremony at the September 11th memorial right around the corner from here, and I saw firsthand how difficult it is for the families and friends of those who died the mother of a fallen firefighter who sees a spirit of her fallen son and her grandchildren, the twin brother of a man who died in the attacks who misses laughing with him, and the many children and grandchildren and cousins who never met family members who died on September 11th but heard stories of how they touched everyone. As a city, we must remember their loss and do everything we can to comfort them through their pain. We must also never forget the heroism demonstrated by all of the first responders that day and in the days after. We are thankful and grateful for their bravery, and I'm glad we made the major step that we just took in finally extending the Victims' Compensation Fund for the families and survivors of folks who worked down at Ground Zero in the aftermath. I'd also like to remember a former colleague of ours, Reverend Councilmember Wendell Foster, 
who passed away last week. Reverend Foster was a friend to many of us, especially to members from the Bronx delegation. Reverend Foster was the first African American to be elected as a city elected official in the Bronx. He was a pioneer, a leader in the civil rights movement, and a mentor to many. Our thoughts are with Reverend Foster's family, including his daughter and other former colleague of members here, Helen Diane Foster, and our thoughts are with their friends. I wanna also acknowledge another member of the NYPD family who has tragically died by suicide. He was a retired transit sergeant who was 48 years old. His name has not been released, but he is the 10th member of the NYPD to die by suicide this year. This, as we continue to say, it has become an epidemic. And my message to all members of the NYPD and all New Yorkers who are struggling is we are here for you and please do not hesitate to reach out to get the help that you need. We have legislation being introduced today that seeks to address this crisis in some way. We work closely with mental health professionals and first responders to put together meaningful legislation and we'll, be, we'll have a hearing on it next week on the 17th. Now I wanna ask that everyone rise and have a moment of silence in honor of the many, many lives that we have lost in the last few weeks, both here in New York City and around the country, and we also are remembering September 11th. Thank you. Last month, we as a country marked, sadly, the 400th anniversary of 1619 when the roots of slavery in America are first documented. We are still coping with the injustice slavery created in our nation, but it's important to continue to acknowledge the harm it has done to our country. This is an important part of the healing process to talk about it, to recognize it, to understand the roots of it and the effect that it has had over the last 400 years and the effect that it still has today in our country, in our city, in our society. So it's important for us to acknowledge that. On a more festive note, I wanna wish everyone, especially Asian New Yorkers, a happy mid-autumn festival. This is one of the most important holidays in the Asian community in our great city. For thousands of years, Asian families get together on this day and celebrate the fall harvest. Mid-autumn is also a day for people to reflect on the hard work that came before the harvest, plowing the land, planting the seeds, tending the crops, and eventually reaping what you've sown. And as Speaker of the Council, I really appreciate uh, the effort that every member here has put in to making our city a better place. I am also proud of the work that we have done together and I look forward to accomplishing a lot more with you all. September also marks National Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Sickle cell disease affects approximately 100,000 Americans, mostly African Americans, and we must do everything we can to help our loved ones living with sickle cell disease and provide as many resources as possible and uh, lastly, I want to take a minute to acknowledge the departure of one of the great, great, great members of the staff here at the City Council, our Deputy General Counsel, Serena Longley. I am very sad that Serena is leaving us. She is amazing. She is leaving us this week to begin her next chapter in the New York State Attorney General's office, Tish. Mm. I'm gonna miss Serena, but I am thrilled that she'll be using her talents, uh, and I am happy for New York, and I'm happy for our country, because Serena is going to continue to contribute in public service and in public life. 
So uh, Serena has been with us uh, really every step of the way. I worked with her before I was speaker when I chaired the health committee and uh, she has done just an incredible, incredible job. Uh, she has been arguing cases in the courtroom for us on land use and on our ability to be represented through amicus briefs. She is just a, a font of knowledge, someone with a great demeanor, someone who really cares about this institution and this body, and we are really gonna miss her. So Serena, best of luck. Thank you for everything. Let's give her a very big round of applause. Steve Matteo is not going to miss you, Serena, though. <laughs> Let's start with uh, land use. The council will vote on the following items. A site selection of a new 3,079-seat high school in Councilmember Jimmy Van Bamer's district in Woodside. The new facility will house three different high school programs, including a District 75 program and 273 Avenue U and Councilmember Mark Traeger's district will facilitate the development of a four-story mixed-use building with nine dwelling units. Moving on, the council will be voting on the following piece of legislation. First, the council will vote on a series of public charge bills. The final rule regarding inadmissibility on public charge grounds was published by the Trump administration in August. We've already seen a drop in benefit enrollment programs due to fear. This is devastating and a discriminatory proposal, and I'm proud that our Attorney General Tish James and the city are involved in a lawsuit challenging this proposal. This rule is complicated and confusing, and people are understandably scared. That's what the federal government wants, for people to disenroll in their benefits out of fear, and we as a city have to fight back. And that is why today we're voting on four bills that will ensure that our city agencies are properly trained on this issue, that the correct public information about public charge is being sent to families across the city, and that we are helping families connect with safe immigration legal services. We are voting on a resolution calling on congressional representatives to task. They must take action to stop the implementation of this new public charge rule. The first is pre-considered introduction number 1711, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, which would require the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, MOYA, to create educational materials on the new public charge rule, and the Department of Education would be required to distribute these materials and make them available to every DOE, stu every DOE school for students, and parents. Next is uh, introduction number 1690A, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, which would require the Human Resources Administration to develop and provide materials to legal service organizations with which it contracts to inform individuals about public benefits in relation to the federal regulations relating to inadmissibility on public charge grounds. The Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs would be required to provide a dedicated telephone number for referrals to legal services for assistance with questions regarding the federal regulations. Next, proposed introduction 1707A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlos Menchaca, the chair of our Immigration Committee, who's done an amazing job on this and on everything immigration related, will require the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs to conduct training on the provisions included in the new public charge rule to employees in the Human Resource Administration, the Department of Homeless Services, and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. The training would also be, be made available to those at the New York City Housing Authority. And uh, we also have pre-considered introduction 1708, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, which would require the Human Resources Administration to distribute information by mail or email regarding all city-funded emergency food programs to individuals who have closed SNAP cases as of or after January 1st, 2016. The bill would also require that a notice about emergency food programs be dispersed to all individuals before their benefits recertification deadline. Information about emergency food programs would need to be made accessible on the HRA website and available via mobile applications. And lastly on this, pre-considered resolution number 1047, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, calls upon the Congress to take legislative action to stop the enactment of the new rule entirely, the inadmissibility uh, on public charge grounds. And I think the staff that worked on this package of bills, uh, Harbani Hahuja, 
Elizabeth Cronk, Brian Crow, and Rob Calandra. Next, we're going to vote on a package of health and wellness legislation that will directly impact New York City public schools. Introduction 560A, sponsored by our education chair, Mark Traeger, will require the Department of Education to report its school start time pilot program. The report would include the names of participating schools, the start times, community outreach engagement, and key findings. The report would also include whether the DOE plans to continue or expand the pilot program. Next, introduction 1348A, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, would require more detailed information on HIV and AIDS education, including the number of full-time and part-time licensed health instructors at each school, and what methods the DOE employs to solicit student feedback regarding the health education they receive. Next, a few resolutions. Resolution 716A, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, calls on the DOE to implement the recommendations of the Sexual Health Education Task Force, which was formed in 2017, pursuant to a local law passed by the Council. Recommendations include HIV and AIDS lessons in elementary schools and condom demonstrations in high schools. Resolution 632, sponsored by Councilmember Ines Barron, calls upon the DOE to create a diabetes and pre-diabetes health-based curriculum. And Resolution 238, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, calls upon the DOE to ban processed meats from being served in New York City public schools. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package, Malcolm Butehorn, Jan Atwell, and Kalima Johnson. In addition, the Council will vote on two bills that will support minority and women-owned business, aka uh, MWBEs. Introduction 1293B, sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, would amend the definition of minority group for purposes of the city's MWBE program to include Native Americans in all covered procurement categories and add Asian Americans in the category for professional service contracts. The bill would also update citywide procurement goals for all minority groups across all procurement categories in accordance with the findings of the most recent citywide disparity study. Next, introduction 1452A, sponsored by Councilman Robert Cornegie, would improve agency performance in meeting MWBE contract participation goals. The bill would also require the director of the Mayor's Office of Contract Services and the director of the Mayor's Office of MWBEs to enable minority and women-owned businesses to compete more effectively in city procurement. This would be achieved via additional training for agency contracting staff and outreach to the city's MWBE community. The bill would also allow contracting staff at city agencies to identify MWBEs that could be available for certain contracts. I think the staff that worked on these two bills, Alex Polinoff, Daniel Collins, uh, Casey Addison, Rachel Cordero, Andrew Wilbur, and John Russell. And finally, the council is voting on a bill that expands the city's human rights law. Introduction 136A, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, extends the protections of the city's human rights law to independent contractors and freelancers. It applies the New York City human rights law to any employer that employs four or more employees at any time during the period beginning 12 months before the start of an unlawful discriminatory practice and continuing through the end of such unlawful discriminatory practice. An employer's parent, spouse, domestic partner, or child, of, uh, if employed by an employer, would now be included in the employee count. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this bill, Balkis Mirig, uh, Leah Skripiak, Rachel Cordero, Isha Wright, and Monica Peppel. That includes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders on bills only that we are voting on today. Are there any members who wish to discuss? We have Council Member Debbie Rose. Thank you. Our small businesses collectively employ more than 3.9 million people in this city. And while many of them are minority and women owned, they have historically struggled with participation in the city contracting process. Our city has made an attempt to correct these disparities with outreach and procurement goals for minority and women owned business enterprises, or MWBEs. It came to my attention that this program contained a glaring omission, one which failed to recognize our nation's dark pack checkered past regarding the treatment of members of Native American tribes 
a shameful legacy that has resulted in higher rates of poverty and unemployment compared to the general population. And yet, members of Native American tribes have not been included in our MWBE outreach. Intro 1293B will rem remedy this omission and add Native American to the list of business owner categories who can register as an MWBE in New York City. And it will also restore Asian American professional services to the list of business owner categories who can register as an MWBE in New York City. Many Asian American businesses have suffered long since losing the ability to gain projects through MWBE set-asides. And this bill remedies that. Finally, this bill will update citywide procurement goals for all historically underrepresented groups across all procurement categories in accordance with the findings from the 2018 citywide disparity study. This is a significant and long needed step toward righting past wrongs. And I want to thank all who helped move this bill forward, especially <coughs> Speaker Corey Johnson, my co sponsor, Councilmember Robert Carnegie, the chair of the Contracts Committee, Councilmember Ben Kalos, and Contracts uh, Committee Council Alex Paulinoff. And finally, I want to thank my constituent, Jacqueline Takarante, who has been a relentless advocate for this bill since its very inception. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Debbie Rose, for your leadership. This is a huge step for the Native American community here in New York City and abroad. Are there any other members who wish to speak on items on today's agenda and for bills that we are voting on today exclusively? Okay, seeing none, we will now have a report on special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Contracts, intro t intros 1293B and 1452A, MWBEs. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intro 136A, worker protections. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 560A, pilot program for school start time. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1348A, Sexual Health Education. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Immigration, Intro 1707A, 1708, and 1711, Public Charge Legislation. Coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 507 and Reso 1051, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled in general orders. Preconsidered LU 512 and Reso 1052, uh, High School. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M178 and Reso 1053, approving the appointment of Jared E. Whittington, Environmental Control Board. Couple of general orders. M179 and Reso 1054, approving the appointment of Everardo Jefferson, Landmarks Preservation Commission. Couple of general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 1281A, cashless transactions. Recommit to the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. <laughs> LU 479 and Reso 1055 and LU 480 and Reso 1056 Avenue U rezoning. Couple of general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders. And at this time, I ask for a roll call vote and all of the items on today's general order calendar. Ampri Samuel. I don't know. Ayala. I don't know. Barron. I vote I don't know. Borelli. I and all, with the exception of intro 136, 1293, 1707, and 711. Thank you. Brannon. I and all. Cabrera. I and all. Matteo. I'm voting no on 136, 1293, 1707, and 1711. I and the rest. I just want to mention um, that uh, we're going to miss Serena Longley. Um, she's been an absolute um, great, great co confidant and counsel to me as the chair of Stands and Ethics. Um, I think I speak on behalf of the committee members when um, she has been there for all of us and counseled us. And the attorney general's gain is certainly the city council's loss. We're going to miss her, but we know she's going to do great things at the attorney general's office. And we just want to wish Serena the best of luck. Thank you. Chin. I and all. Cohen. Constantinides. I and all. Deutsch. Uh, abstain on 1348A and I and the rest.
Diaz. Yes, on all except on resolution 716A, voting no on that one, 716A, no. Yes, on all the rest. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. About aye. Gibson. I vote aye on all and also want to express my warmest regards and congratulations to Serena Longley and wish you all the very best in the Attorney General's office. Thank you for all your service and we will truly miss you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jonai. Aye. aye on all. Grodenchik. Aye on all. Holden. I and all except for intros 1690, 1707, and 1711. I vote no. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of introduction 1293B by Councilmember Rose and introduction 1452A by Councilmember Cornig and I congratulate my colleagues on carrying these two important pieces of legislation. Discrimination against women and people of color in this city when dealing with city contracts is just so rampant that when Asian American professional service providers uh, were finally getting their fair share of the market, um, there was no longer a substantial disparity for how many contracts they were getting and they were removed from having the benefit of the MWBE program, uh, we now discover that they lost their market share. Without MWBE, they face so much discrimination that there is now a disparity, and today we're actually having to bring them back in. And that is the right thing to do, but it is not a good thing. It is not a good reflection on our society and moving forward against discrimination. Uh, and so I want to thank the Alliance of New York Asian Architects and Engineers who are here in the balcony for their advocacy for coming out. Uh, and as we try to right this wrong and hope we can move forward towards a society without discrimination, and as we look at our own country's centuries of discrimination against Native Americans, they finally have enough of a market share to be recognized in the MWEBE program and they will be added and have those benefits as well. Uh, it's high time and I'm glad to do so. I vote aye on all. Thank you. <laughs> Quiet in the chamber. King. S abstain on 716A and aye on all. Rest. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues for supporting intro 136A. I think people know that in recent years, corporations have significantly increased their use of independent contractors and freelancers as a way of getting work done with less liability to them. I think people know that those independent contractors and freelancers, of course, you know, don't get health insurance, don't have retirement security, don't have the right to, to join a union or unemployment insurance. But I think it, it surprises most of us. It certainly surprised me to learn those freelancers and independent contractors also don't have the employment protections from discrimination and harassment of the New York City human rights law. So when Angela Ivana, a freelance beauty professional and makeup artist, uh, was told by her agent that he didn't want to put her picture up on their website because he didn't want the clients to see she was African American, or when Aaron Bagwell, who's a filmmaker and freelance writer, or Carolina Salas, a marketer, faced sexual harassment from their clients, that they did not have recourse to the New York City human rights law to clearly protect them from discrimination and harassment. I'm glad New York City is taking the step today to make sure that all workers, regardless of how they're hired or classified, are clearly protected from discrimination and harassment. And I thank you for supporting this bill. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Yeah, we do. Aye. Levine. Aye. 
Mizell. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I am voting aye on all, but I want to lift up the packages uh, or the package that pertains to public charge. I want to thank the incredible uh, vanguard of council members that rose to the occasion and promoted bills that will allow for us as a city to respond to the public charge and the changes that would essentially make our city and our neighbors hungrier, unhealthy, and potentially lose housing. That is the wrong direction for not just our city, but the country. What I want to do is also say thank you to the administration. The Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs on public charge has been incredibly strong, and I want to continue to support their work. The work that we're doing is in contrast to what the federal government continues to do, which is to focus on white supremacy policies that remove the power away from our people on the ground in our cities and access to these services that are free of charge and that are the right thing to do is how we want to keep people connected. I, I know that some members on this, in this council have voted no against those bills, and so fine, vote no. But do not deny them the opportunity to connect to important services, including lawyers. And so if your staff are here, I'm giving them number 1-800-566-7636. Make sure that your constituents, at least, have access to lawyers so that they can understand their specific case as they engage this question after October 15th that may change public charge rules. The New American Hotline is open from 9 to 8 p.m., 1-800-566-7636. They have that right to access, and I hope you give that to them. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. I, uh, permission to explain my vote, please? You're good, Danique. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I want to congratulate uh, my colleagues on the thoughtful legislation this afternoon that protects workers, that protects the rights of immigrants as well. Um, that's what this body is about. With that being said, that because my colleague Vanessa Gibson is not here today, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I did not mention the work of uh, Reverend Wendell Forster, our colleague in, in the council here and in the very chambers here, uh, hearing, he convenes hearings that address uh, the African burial grounds that, that ultimately uh, led to the national monuments and some of the work that is being done around there and, and his legacy. So um, I want to uh, give him my condolences to his family as well. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Speaker Johnson, uh, to uh, Chairman Chaka, uh, and my colleagues for being fierce advocates for immigrant New Yorkers and using uh, every mechanism at our disposal to fight uh, Trump's public charge policy change. Uh, I'm proud to be part of a legislative body that refuses to stand by while the White House pushes a white nationalist agenda. Most people don't strike gold when they arrive at this country, and they don't expect to either. Instead, they take tough jobs and work long hours. For some of these new Americans, though, that's not enough. They may need a little help to keep their heads above water. And make no mistake, as lawful American citizens, they qualify for these social benefits, just like everyone else that was lucky enough to have been born within our borders. I uh, will never begrudge someone who comes here in search of the American dream and perseveres through blood, sweat, and tears to turn that dream into reality. The pursuit of this dream is the quintessential American story, and as a son of immigrants, I will never forget that this is also my family's story, and as this is for other countless immigrant families. Uh, needing help is not an indictment of their character, but refusing help in the wealthiest country the world has ever known for no reason other than pure xenophobia, that absolutely is an indictment of our national character. Uh, and that is exactly what this administration is doing here. Uh, their wealth test for the public charge will frighten immigrants into disenrolling from life-sustaining programs and deter them from getting the help that they need. When and where we can help, we must. Uh, my bill will provide information on emergency feeding programs to anyone who disenrolls from SNAP and whose SNAP benefits are set to lapse and ensure that those who need help feeding themselves and their families will not starve. It is incumbent upon us as elected officials to take care of all of our constituents, regardless of their national origin or economic status. Uh, thank you, and I will be voting aye. Thank you. Perkins. 
Aye on all. Powers. Aye on all. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm just echoing my colleagues in, in the public charge package that we passed on the leadership of the Chair of the Immigration Committee, Char Carlos Menchaca. And uh, these resources are already available. We want to make sure that people know that, that they're at their disposal, that they're available in spaces that they trust by people who they know. And if this rule goes into effect on October 15th, this hateful rule rooted rooted in, in bigotry, it's going to force New Yorkers to make the unfathomable choice between feeding their children and becoming an American citizen. And we don't want anyone to have to make that choice. So I, I'm proud of, of the package of legislation that we passed, to, that hopefully we're passing today, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Yes. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Thank you for the permission. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, I would appreciate your support on uh, my bill intro 560A. I think this is the first uh, in recent memory uh, comprehensive analysis of programming in our schools. This is a bill that would require the DOE to report on a pilot that we push for um, on moving school start time at a more reasonable hour. There are over 50 schools in our public school system that we're learning that start school even before 8.15, before 8 o'clock in the morning. This is personal for me where I taught a, a high school regents class at 7.30 in the morning in Brooklyn. I had students traveling two trains and a bus from the Bronx to get to class on time on an unreliable transportation system. Uh, CDC is reporting that a number of adolescents are, are just reports of sleep deprivation, the impact this has on learning in schools. So we're asking DOE just to report on the pilot and to also look at the school lunch hour. We're hearing that schools are serving lunch at 9 o'clock in the morning. That is not lunch. That is breakfast. So we need to have a comprehensive look at programming in our school system, and I thank my colleagues for their support, and I vote aye on all. Thank you for your leadership. Us moms appreciate it. Torres. I know. Ulrich. I vote I on all. Van Bramer. Bless you. Jaeger. I on all with the exception of intro 136 and intro 1293 on which I vote no. Combo. I vote aye. Van Bramer. I don't know. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 136-A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1293-B, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. 
and intro 1348A, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. Intro 1690A, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1707, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, and three negative. Intro 1711 was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-ups vote is 50 in the affirmative and zero negative. That's it, okay. And that concludes our tally. Introduction reading of bills. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll now go into introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on today's agenda. We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? We have Council Member Barron. Thank you. I just want to call your attention to Reso 3632, which requires the Department of Education to establish a curriculum on diabetes and prediabetes. It's the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and in New York City. About 40% of the elementary school children are overweight, which is a contributing factor to diabetes. Uh, the, however, the Board of Education does not require that this content be taught or introduced or strictly identify how students can be able to be sensitive to this very healthy, to this very chronic disease which is prevalent among the black community. So this would require them to establish a curriculum that is medically accurate, that is age and developmentally appropriate, and culturally inclusive, and links healthy eating habits to mental and emotional health. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron, for your leadership. Councilmember Cabrera, did you wish to speak on resolutions or on general discussion? Yes, uh, in the reso. Okay. I thank you so much. I'll make it really quick. Uh, this is in regards uh, to reso 238. That's been coined as Ban de Bologna. I want to uh, uh, give a uh, thanks to Borough President Eric Adam, the co prime sponsor of this legislation and also a strong advocate for healthy lifestyle who had a similar experience like I did four years ago, almost four years ago. Uh, my arteries were clogged, 99% in one spot, 90 in another spot. Uh, the person who, pros uh, who did the angiogram literally said, uh, when I told him, hey, I had like 24 hours to live, he goes, no, you were gonna die today. I had no contingency arteries because uh, I was it was too young four years ago for the heart to develop that. Uh, that caused me to really think about, I was not a mad God of people. Uh, I was upset at myself because of the way I had treated uh, this temple, this body. And uh, from that point forward, I made it a point. Can I have 30 seconds more? Pl please continue. Thank you. I, I made it a point uh, to uh, to try to be as much as an advocate as possible for healthy eating, especially when it comes to our children. And we know uh, with, when we see the reports, the research empirical data coming out uh, from our Harvard School of Poli Health Policy, where the chances of, of, of death increases by 50%. We know the carcinogens uh, there are in uh, these uh, processed meats uh, that that's the last thing that should be in the plate of children in our school, and we have control over that. And so with that, I'd like to thank uh, the speaker, uh, Chair Traeger, and uh, the staff for all your help uh, in making this wrestle uh, a reality today, and to my colleagues for their support. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your truth, and we're so blessed to have you. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Today I am proud to pass two resolutions that address critical issues in our city and across the country. 
Resolution 716A calls on the New York City Department of Education to fully adopt the recommendations of the Mayor's Sexual Health Education Task Force and provide comprehensive sexual education on a regular basis in all grade levels. Sexual health education is medically accurate, developmentally appropriate, and culturally responsive uh, programming that provides young people with the tools to make informed and empowered decisions about their health and well-being, <clears throat> including how to build healthy relationships, understand consent and bodily autonomy, and learn to value and respect people's identities across genders, gender, sexuality, race, and culture. My second resolution, uh, 1047, calls on Congress to pass legislation to overturn the Trump administration's rule on public charge. This rule is predicated on cruel and bigoted assumptions about immigrants people who are our friends, loved ones, and neighbors, and stigmatizes the use of basic health care and nutrition. Medicaid, SNAP, and housing assistance has, been made, uh, has made the difference for countless families across the city, but if enacted, this rule would change the impact on upwards of 475,000 residents. Um, no one should ever be discriminated against or punished for taking care of their family's well-being, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes on both of these resolutions. Thank you. And I Thank you. Councilmember Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I want to thank the speaker and all of my colleagues for your expressions of condolence and prayers on behalf of the family of the late, great Wendell Foster. Um, I've had an opportunity to talk to the family, to the wife, to his daughters, and they are so thankful and overwhelmed with all the love and support. And as the speaker mentioned, Reverend Wendell Foster served in this body from 1978 until 2001 and was succeeded by his daughter, Helen Diane Foster, from 2002 until 2013. And then I had the honor of serving and still serve um, as the council member for District 16. Reverend Foster was an icon, a pioneer, a trailblazer. He was the very first ever African-American elected to any position in Bronx County at a time during the 80s and 90s when there was no African-American leadership in the Bronx. And he stood tall among many when you talk about his faith-based work. He served as the pastor of Christ Church for over 42 years. And he was someone that we loved and, and truly admired. And so I want to thank all of you for your love and your support and ask you to continue to pray for his family. He and his wife on Tuesday would have celebrated their 63rd wedding anniversary. And so we thank you so much. The services are tomorrow and Saturday. And if anyone needs any further information, please let me know or call my office, and we're happy to provide it. So thank you, and may Reverend Wendell Foster rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Oh, Madam Majority Leader, sorry. Getting promotions. <laughs> May he rest in peace, and thank you for sharing that biography and sharing more about his work in the Bronx. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. Resolution 238, resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to ban processed meats from being served in the New York City public schools. All in favor say A. Aye. All opposed? A. Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 632, resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to create a diabetes and pre-diabetes health-based curriculum. All in favor say aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 716A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to adopt all of the policy recommendations of the Mayor's Sexual Health Education Task Force and provide comprehensive sexual health education on a regular basis across all grade levels. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Preconsidered resolution 1047, Resolution calling on the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign. Hmm. Legislation that would prohibit the enactment of the federal rule entitled Inadmissibility on Public Charge Grounds. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion, and congratulations to all of those who put forward resolutions today. We will begin with Council Member 
Ben Kalos. Thank you. One by one, we see storefronts shutter, lights out in apartments at night, at first just buildings, then whole city blocks abandoned, a blight in even the nicest of neighborhoods. We're solving the mystery of who's buying what so that neighbors know what's going on in their communities and can respond in time to do something about it. I'm asking my colleagues to join uh, me, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Council Members Rosenthal, Reynoso, Levine, and Powers in passing uh, Introduction 1701 of 2019, which would require that any time there's a transfer of development rights recorded with the city, that a copy be provided within five days to the relevant community board, council member, and borough president, along with the speaker of the city council. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kalos. We'll be followed by Rodriguez and then by Eugene. Thank you, Majority Leader. So first of all, I would like to invite everyone to use the social media to invite all New Yorkers to join the Climate Change March that will take place next Friday. Today, New York City schools announced that they will be granting permission to all the students uh, to be excused next Friday from the schools if they will be participating in this march, which is part of the national movement. I would also like to ask that CUNY and SUNY follow the same thing that the DOE is doing, because I think that this is about sending the message that from North Manhattan to the South Bronx to each borough in the city of New York, we are determined to build a strong voice not only in the city of New York, but also to build the voice to DC that climate change is real. That Maria, Katrina, Sunny, Sandy, Snowstorm, what happened in the Bahama, uh, the whole fire in Amazon, Peru, Uruguay, all those places, she means a lot for us in order to take the necessary, the necessary step to save the planet. So I would like again to invite all New Yorkers to be part of this march that will take place next Friday and to say congratulations, especially to the youngsters who are the ones leading this initiative. Eh, pedimos que todas las personas sean parte de la marcha que tomará lugar el próximo viernes en la ciudad de Nueva York. El Departamento de Educación ya anunció hoy que dará permiso a los estudiantes para que se puedan excusar de la escuela si participan. Pedimos que CUNY y SUNY todos sigan el mismo ejemplo que mandemos el mensaje que podemos preservar nuestro planeta. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. Now we'll be hearing from Councilmember Eugene and then Councilmember Barron. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I would like to take this uh, moment to talk about Entro 1699, a bill I introduced that seeks to establish a task force that will study the danger and economic impacts on elevated railways that exist throughout our transit system in New York City. It is too critically important that such a study is co commissioned since none has been done in recent memory and many think that uh, we do know concerning the impact of elevated railways are very troubling. We are all aware of the hazard created by corrosive metal that fall off elevated track and end up denting cars and in certain instances shattering the windows of vehicles. What I'm describing is bad enough, but it is only a matter of time before pieces of metal falling from elevated rails result in fatalities. It appears that there is a direct uh, correlation between underserved communities and elevated railways. The hazard that are associated with elevated train combined with the noise and vibration that they generate may all be factors impacting the quality of life of people. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, I call upon you to support Entro 1699, which will call for a study on elevated rail rays that is long overdue and has the, has the promise of improving the, the, of improving the safety and quality of life of countless number of people living in New York City. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Eugene. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you. I want to add my voice to those who have talked about the great work 
of Reverend Wendell Forster, both as a council member, as a community leader, and in his fight to make sure that there was just, justice and equity and acknowledgement of the contributions of African Americans to this country. Excuse me one moment. Quiet in the chamber, please. So we send our condolences to his family and say that his accomplishments will be remembered. Secondly, I want to call my colleagues' attention to three pieces of legislation. Uh, the piece on the intro, 1687, which calls on city contractors of $100,000 or more to search their history and to declare if they had any involvement in the slave trade. And Rezos 1039 and 1040, which I'm sponsoring also with my colleague, Councilmember Miller, which supports H.R. 40 in Congress, which has been around for about 20 years, which calls for a study and development of reparations proposals. And in the state legislature, A3020 and Assembly 2964, which establishes a New York State Commission on Reparations Remedies. As has been said, until we address these issues and examine them and acknowledge them, their impact will not be removed from our uh, functioning. And lastly, I want to acknowledge the life of Robert Mugabe, who was the president of Zimbabwe. He was trained as a teacher, and he joined the movement to form an independent state to be led by the representatives of the black majority. He protested against Rhodesia, led by Ian Smith, and for that, he was imprisoned for 10 years. At the end of that time, he did participate in the peace negotiations at Lancaster Castle, which said that moving forward, the United States and Great Britain would pay those European farmers who had come and stolen the land from the indigenous people, that the United States and Great Britain would pay those persons for their land. There was no movement for 20 years. And after that time, Robert Mugabe and the government said to those landowners, pick one of your many farms that you have and we will pay you for that, but you cannot continue to monopolize the farmlands that belong to the people that you stole it from. So that was when he became a villain, and that was when sanctions were imposed, and the conditions also of the drought that led to the severe conditions. But we want to acknowledge him for the great work that he did in establishing the country of Zimbabwe and making sure that the people were represented. Thank you. Thank you, and I also want to say our thoughts and prayers go out to the many people of the Bahamas. Over 2,500 people are still listed as missing as of today. 50 people have been reported um, as dead, and we certainly want to make sure that this country supports the Bahamas in their time of need, because they are certainly facing a tremendous impact after Dorian ripped across their country um, just a week ago. And our thoughts and prayers should continue to remain with them, and our levels of support should also be with them. I also want to invite everyone to my district um, on Sunday for a celebration. It is the Friends of Crown Heights, um, along with the Jewish Children's Museum and the Brooklyn Children's Museum and the Jewish Children's Museum to recognize the Crown Heights uprising that happened 28 years ago um, in our community. It's a way to recognize the tragedy that happened, but also to begin to heal our community and to bring the various members of our community together. So it'll be Sunday, September 15th, from 1 to 6 p.m. at Brower Park, right next door to the Brooklyn Children's Museum. And we will close out with Council Member Steve Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just wanted to uh, echo uh, Council Member Matteo's remarks earlier and Council Member Gibson's remarks, thanking Serena Longley um, for her service to the Council and for being um, you know, such a, a real partner and great resource. And we wish her well, um, working with our great Attorney General, Letitia James. Thank you, Serena. And that's all, thank you. Thank you, and this meeting of September 12th is now adjourned. I will now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson. You said it, this meeting's adjourned, thank you. <laughs>